A massive coronal hole has rotated into the Earth's strike zone, and it's sending us some fast wind now. Will it be enough to bring us aurora? Those stories are more in the news this week. Even though the sun is spotless this week, it's sure staying busy. We have this massive coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone. It has been sending us some fast wind over the past day or so, and it's bumped us up to active conditions. Now, even though it hasn't reached storm levels yet, this fast wind has brought us aurora. We've gotten it down to mid-latitudes. There have been several reports, both in Europe as well as in the Western Hemisphere, of some decent aurora, despite the fact that we have a full moon. On top of that, we've had a couple mini solar storms being launched. They're a little bit stealthy. Don't know if they're going to be affecting Earth over the next couple days, but they could impact uh, and intensify this fast wind that's hitting now. On top of that, we have this bright region. We were sure hoping that it was going to have a bigger impact than it has on the solar flux. It is waning now, and it is dropping our solar flux even more. We've been sitting at kind of a low level for for radio propagation, and it looks like that's going to continue easily over the next week and may even get worse on the day side as this region rotates out of Earth view. Switching to our MFLAR threat meter, you can see with a spotless sun, we're going to have a flatlined X-ray flux, and that's what you see here. And by proxy, the solar flux is also very low. Radio propagation is at poor propagation conditions right now, and it will continue to be that way easily for the next week. And as if things couldn't get worse, you could see kind of things beginning to tank even a little bit more starting around the 22nd. That's because that bright region on the Earth-facing disk is dimming even further. And here in the next couple days, it's going to rotate off of the sun's west limb and things might actually get even worse if that's imaginable. The nice thing, however, is that we do have a new region that is rotating onto the Earth-facing disk here in about four to five days and it might boost the propagation in the solar flux hmm, just a little bit. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week we've been hovering between quiet and unsettled conditions. We've been hit by a couple pockets of fast solar wind right around the 20th and the 21st. It wasn't enough to bump us to storm levels, but it was enough to bring us some aurora at high latitudes especially, and some photographers got some pretty good shots. After that, though, things quieted down for a couple days, and now we've gotten hit by that big uh, fast stream from that massive coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth's strike zone. It's already popped us to active conditions several times over the past day and brought us some decent aurora to several places, even fighting that full or near full moon that we've got right now. And these conditions could continue easily over the next 24 hours before we kind of get back to unsettled conditions, and then things should be expected to quiet down as we get close to the weekend. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And when you look at Stereo's view of the sun, it looks almost as boring as the view from Earth. This is a solar minimum, folks. This is kind of what the sun looks like. Luckily, we do have one bright region in Stereo's view. This is the region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next week, which is going to give amateur radio operator something to smile about when it boosts the, ra the solar flux just a little bit. We also have a tiny coronal hole that's going to be also rotating Earth side. This coronal hole might bring us a small pocket of fast wind, which can give aurora photographers another chance in a few weeks to catch a mini solar storm. And it also might help GPS reception be at low latitudes because it helps stable these tiny little storms, help stabilize the upper atmosphere. The one other nice thing is it looks like there's a hint of another region that will be rotating into Stereo's view here in the next few days. So that's good news again for amateur radio operators because it means maybe in a couple weeks we could bump back up to marginal propagation. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that fast wind from that massive coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth's strike zone, and we are getting active aurora even down at mid-latitudes. We've seen some reports already. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 15% chance of a minor storm, and this is over the the 
next 24 hours. The conditions will then slowly begin to wane after that, with things getting a lot more quiet as we get to the weekend. So your aurora photographers, especially at mid-latitudes, you have a chance to catch some aurora, but it will be fleeting. So stay on your toes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares because we still have a spotless sun. We are at solar minimum, folks, and unfortunately that means that the solar flux is horrible. These are some of the lowest numbers we've seen all cycle, and we're going to have to stick with them here easily for the next few days. Radio propagation on Earth's day side is terrible, I know that. Luckily, though, within the next week, we're going to have a region kind of poking its head around the sun's east limb, and that should boost the solar flux just a little bit. But you're going to have to be patient because it's going to be a slow rise. Hopefully, we'll get up to the low ed edge of marginal propagation conditions, but no promises. Nonetheless, in about two weeks, we actually might see these numbers turn back into the yellow. So despite us experiencing solar minimum light conditions, the sun continues to be a bit active. We have a huge coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone, and it's been sending us some fast wind. And despite it not being a super strong storm, it has bumped us up to active conditions and brought aurora sporadically down to mid-latitudes. So you aurora photographers, you should be very happy, but stay on your toes so you can catch these shots easily over the next day or so before things begin to wane. Now, amateur radio operators aren't quite as happy with these minimum light conditions because the solar flux is completely tanked. We're seeing some of the lowest numbers that we have uh, seen this entire cycle, and it's going to continue that way easily over the next week before a new region rotates into Earth view on the sun's east limb. And then that might bring a slow rise in the solar flux to maybe even marginal conditions in about two weeks. So keep your fingers crossed because I know sporadic E is great and auroral propagation is great with these solar storms, but nothing beats some decent solar flux. Now, as far as your GPS operators are concerned, well, as long as you stay away from aurora and maybe even the dawn dust terminators, your reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.